This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. The views expressed on this show are not necessarily those of WPSL. But you're encouraged to like and share them on Facebook because it's time for the African-American scene. Brought to you by Howard Insurance of Port St. Lucie and hosted by Rudy Howard. Good evening. I'm glad to be with you here on a Wednesday night. Uh, listen, you know there's a controversy brewing that I want to talk about tonight. I posted it on Facebook to let you know that it was coming. For some reason, conservatives are very upset about the New York Times putting together the 1619 Project. I don't understand why they're so upset. I mean, it's nothing more than uh, highlighting specifics of history to uh, demonstrate uh, how uh, African Americans have played an important part in the shaping of America. But okay, I, I guess there's somebody out here who wants to call and complain about that. And if you want to call and complain about it, I, I'm willing to listen and hear your point of view. But let's talk about why this project is important. And the number is 3401590, 3401590. The project was created to reshape the ideology of African Americans' contribution to America. Now, I don't know why that would upset you, but that's the purpose of why the project was created. And hopefully, in doing so, what you will have is a reshaping of people's opinions about who we are and the importance of African Americans to the development of America. From a, a personal point of view, let, let me tell you why this is so important to me. When I graduated from high school, I went to a predominantly all-white high school, although if you visited my town now, you would never believe it, uh, but I did. And when I left high school, the only thing I knew about African Americans was that we were slaves and we picked cotton. I just, that was the extent of my knowledge, I'm ashamed to say, but that was what I knew. And in speaking to some of my elders, they didn't want to talk about the past. I believe there was some very painful memories back there about things that had happened to them or their immediate family members. What I can tell you, my own grandmother, my, my mother's mother, um, after Roots aired on TV, I got very interested in trying to think about determining our family tree. And I told that story to my, we, I called her my mom. And she asked me in a very serious way, please don't do that, leave that alone. And I said, okay. Uh, and I didn't ask any more questions, but I got, <coughs> I got the feeling from the way my grandmother responded, <coughs> there were some painful memories back there that she did not want to relive. Well, when I got to college, I took a black history class in my first year, and wow, did it open my eyes. And uh, I began to learn something about who I was. And I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know 
about who I was and uh, where the roots of the African American people came from. And it had a profound effect on me. I developed a certain sense of pride in understanding how uh, that my African American heritage was developed, which I didn't know up to that point. I would imagine some of my friends who attended segregated high schools here in the South probably had a different experience than I did because those teachers who were probably from their same neighborhood uh, taught them more in depth about African Americans and the African American experience. What I will tell you is this. Part of one's development into adulthood is the development of self-esteem. And self-esteem is partially created by knowing who you are, where you come from, and about your family values. And for us to be able to look back and know more about that will and has created self-esteem where none may have existed or it was very little. The other important thing about the 1619 Project is to squash stereotypes of brown people created by movies and TV shows. There are stereotypes that have also affected, those stereotypes have also affected how white people view us. Now, some of you have heard me say this before, but it's apropos for this particular conversation. When you look at a Tarzan movie and you got one white guy that goes into Africa and can beat up a whole tribe of African warriors, that is the most ridiculous, nonsensical uh, thing that you could put in a movie. And yes, I loved Tarzan because in my youth, I was not aware enough to understand the significance of that. But now also think about all the little young white guys that grew up seeing that as who they are, that they could go into Africa, <laughs> into a tribe, and, and beat up a whole tribe full of African warriors. Uh, now, we all know just from looking at National Geographic, you would be toasted if you tried to go in there and do that uh, because some of those people were fierce warriors, uh, the, li the likes of which we don't even have here. And then we look at the cowboys and Indians. All of us in my age group played cowboys and Indians. Nobody wanted to be an Indian because the Indians were the bad guys. Are you feeling me? You're feeling how this shapes minds and thoughts? You would see the guys charging across the plains, uh, shooting Indians, and if you were playing uh, cowboys and Indians in the neighborhood, nobody ever wanted to be an Indian. Everybody always wanted to be the cowboy. So think about that. Think about our gang. One of the most popular shows when I was a kid 
and look at the caricatures of the black kids that were on that show. Again, another thing to shape the minds of those that are watching that. It would be literally impossible for this stuff not to affect young minds. Had to have an effect on you. If you were sitting there on Saturday morning and you were watching our gang or you were watching Jungle Jim or Tarzan on Saturday morning TV and that was what you saw, it would be, (laughs) you would have to be an extraordinary human being that that did not have an effect on you. Now, that may not have had an overt effect on you, but inside of you, that registered some information that was erroneous. In August of 1619, a ship arrived in Virginia with 20 plus slaves on board. Nicole Hanna, staff writer at the New York Times, proposed an examination of slavery and how it continues to shape our current country. I I think that's probably one of the things that really bothers conservatives. I have said more times than I can count on fingers and toes, how could it not have an impact after all of those years of everything that we had to experience that that would not have an impact that carried on to today? Again, that phone number is 340-1590. So, Once she proposed this idea to the New York Times, she gathered 18 scholars and historians, and they met with the New York Times staff earlier this year to discuss the concept of the 1619 Project. And, In that discussion, they were trying to decide in which direction this was going to go. Hey, and we have Dominic on line one. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. I'm going to keep this really brief. Okay. I was impressed with the metaphor that you used about what they learned from entertainment. Yes. And, you know, none of that changed. I'm going to talk about Huggy Bear and, you know, uh, yes. Superfly yes. and, uh, you know, but none of that. See, the backup was that the education system was triply flawed in teaching manifest destiny. That the, the, do you know that now in, textbooks made in texas they are referring to african-american slaves as imported labor <laughs> so i don't, I don't doubt answer it. the question political correctness <laughs> yes <laughs> go ahead yeah. go ahead but to, to answer the question why this upsets some people and and you know very well who it upsets because he went on about it for two hours yesterday on the radio <laughs> they didn't read it they saw the premise and didn't even open the magazine. They didn't read it. No. <laughs> it flies it flies in the face of everything we've been taught of and I send you a I send you something, you'll see it on your Facebook page. I saw I it. wrote it out pretty clearly. It flies in the face of all men are created equal, that these dead shall not have died in vain. It's utter nonsense and it's also a part of the most illuminating thing in the article to me and i read the whole thing everybody's commentary everything the fact that cotton 
was the oil of the day. It was. And the whole nature of predatory capitalism is not going to listen to reason, equality, justice, or any of that. Yeah. They have no interest in sustainability. Everything is marketed to how much can I get now? Never mind the pain that I cause. Never mind any of that. So I hope I hope nobody really rips you up about this, but it's probably one of the most accurate pieces of American history that we've been shown for a long time. I have. And I spent 50 years. When I got back from Vietnam, I spent 50 years looking at history from different countries. I didn't want to hear what the American textbook said. I wanted to hear what Simone Bolivar said. I wanted to hear what Jose Marti said. I wanted to hear from Franz Fanon. I wanted to hear from Regis Debray. I wanted to hear the truth. I didn't want no pablum. So keep on working, Rudy. You got to do what you got to do. Well, thank you, Dominic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Major kudos to Rudy Howard tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, D Dominic is is my Facebook buddy, and he and I go back and forth on a lot of things. And, and he's he's very he's very insightful, right? And uh, and he's well read, and he owns a bookstore. Uh, he is a very well read man, and he 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 does he thinks deeply about some of these issues, and he's right. But I, you know, why would you object to learning the truth? But he's already talked about why people would object to learning the truth. But in any event, let's 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 see if we can push forward a little more. Again, that number is three four zero one five nine zero. That's three four zero one five nine zero. She gathered together eighteen scholars and historians. And they sat with the time staff earlier this year. The focus was to create a full picture, not a comprehensive picture, but a full picture of slavery and uh, African Americans that came here to these shores. Now, one of the things that you have been taught, and I too was taught, we were running around in the woods with loincloths half dressed, and they picked us up and put us on a ship, and as that dumb, stupid uh, housing, and Ben Carson said, we were saved. Well, no, not quite. I want you to remember this. The pyramids built in Egypt, that's part of Africa. That was built by Africans. The Sphinx, along with the pyramids, one of the wonders of the world, that was built by Africans. So the heathens that we think that Africans were is a exaggeration because there were some that came here from pretty sophisticated uh, uh, tribes and with some classic experience regarding uh, society as a whole and in terms of math, in terms of engineering, some of them had that. And I want you to think about this for a second. Just just try to try to hold on to this. Those barns and fences and houses that were built on plantations, who do you think built those? Do you think the slave owner built those? I don't think so. So if the African Americans built those when they were truly free, how come they didn't get any jobs in construction? They had all the experience. They had all the know-how. Think about that for a second. Just think about that. They built those things. 
Yet, when they were free, they were not able to participate. Again, 3401590. Americans are so poorly educated about slavery, very poorly educated about slavery. And they are equally as poorly educated about Indians and the Indian culture and what happened to the Indians. And you know, we, we try to stay in this little cocoon and make pretend like these things don't exist or we want to try to put them in a box and put them away. And whenever I have a discussion like this, the phone never rings because, I hate to say it, but a lot of you are cowards. You, you say you believe or you, you think about what you feel about these issues, but when it comes to voicing them and the speaking on them, uh, there's a reluctance to have your voice heard. And, and that's just tragic because part of the solution for solving many of the things that exist is a willingness to be able to express your ideas and be able to accept the counter arguments and, and see whether or not your, a point, your opinion can stand up to the counter argument to the opinion that you have presented. So, uh, but like I said, this always happens whenever I have this kind of discussion, there's always a reluctance uh, to have any kind of uh, feedback. And Steve on line one, yes, sir. Yes, Steve. But hey, um, I, I, first of all, you got my letter, I guess. Yes, so I did. I guess you read that. And and but on the on the topic tonight, I agree. It, it, it's, a, it's an emotional issue. Uh, it's hard It's hard a lot of times for people to, to talk about truth and things that, are, that happen. But I think in the last letter I, sh I, I wrote to you, I, the number of slaves that came to the United States and the number of slaves that went to other places in the United States from uh, other part of the world in the United States, uh, do you remember any of the numbers on those? No, no, and, and we're not going to play that game. Okay, well, I'll give them to you. You know, okay, Brazil well, got not, four we're million. Not gonna, we're not going to play that game. And, and well, evident, but, evidently you didn't hear me last week because oh, what, what, what I said last week was that you send me letters and you drop off letters and you don't give me an opportunity to respond. You give me no actually, return. Actually, I do. I actually said, you give me a call, Rudy, while I'll get together with you. I said, I'll come by your office anytime you want if I got time. Okay. And then I also told you the to read the book by Jim Wallace. I did read the book by Jim Wallace. Okay. Did you? Did, and, and and he made a lot of uh, poor assumptions from from the standpoint of I mean, his book. But the point being is is that yes, we have to have the truth, you know, and we have to have it. We have to have to also understand the slaves that were, you know. There was not enough people. If, if we use your example that Africa was a highly developed, civilized uh, um, civilization and that these small boats came in that were maybe 80 foot long at the most and had enough people to go in and take and seize African tribes or whatever and then put them in chains, and that's not what happened. And you know it didn't. It was... It was black African tribes warring against black African tribes. A lot of it was also by Arabs that were selling slaves also. It was not so much as people want to say America. America didn't come into being until 1776. Slavery did not exist less than, less than what, 145 years, something like that, in the United States legally. So, you know, uh, and, but so, the so, so what happened to America 
between 1619 and 1776. So that, that was, was not that was, the United that, States. That, that was not the United States of America. Not, no, that was not America. That was not the United States. Was of America. that America? Answer the daggone question. Well, so is South America, America, and so is okay. Central America, America. Don't don't select parts of history that you want to uh, bring forward. Accept all of history. That's what the whole project is about. That's people selecting right. people selecting uh, parts of history that they want to talk about. Sure. Because they're important to them, and and these people have, in their in their uh, makeup, a bias that they want to put out, of course, and and you would say that the conservatives, if the conservative did this, you would say they have a bias, but all in all, when you get to the big picture, United States was one of the least, uh, the United States, the not not the United States, the America as you want to call it, didn't receive more than maybe 300,000 slaves because the slave count went all the way up into Canada. And the, it, the United States was one of the, the countries that received the fewest amount of slaves. Most of the slaves were, were in Brazil and, it, you know, they were in, in Spain and or Cuba and the West Indies and even Holland. They hired them not for cotton because sugar cane. I don't know what this man knows about cotton, but cotton cotton is was not the oil of the of the time. Sugarcane was making much more money, and it was harder to. No, you're to, wrong. To, you're wrong. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Cane because is what get what gave us political and economic power around the world was the cotton industry and some other. Absolutely and, not. That would not well, have been the okay, truth. Well, because that is the truth. Look it up. That's the truth. If the, if the, if the slave trade was, was specifically for cotton, understand, they went to Brazil. It was not cotton. I know. They went to Brazil. They In went Cuba, to, they went to Haiti. Cotton. They went to uh, Portugal. I, I get that. I know that. You're not telling me anything I don't know. Okay. Well, that's good. I know you know everything. No, I don't know everything, but I'm pretty okay. smart. Uh, you, th you think you are. I think I'm pretty dumb because there's more that I don't know than what I know. Okay. But but what I know is what is the fact that the United States did not, because of the Constitution, which was, what, uh, 12 years after that, when it was written or left in 1776, understand that that same Constitution is what was used and, and, and developed this country into a position where there was a civil war. And in that civil war over flight of slavery, there was more than twice the number of white people that were killed in that civil war fighting over slavery than there were slaves. You know what? You understand the United States is founded on a constitution that you make fun of, and people say, hey, That's ridiculous. you know, it's a racist document. That's a moronic no. statement. That's a moronic statement. And you got about one more second, then I'm going to hang up on you. Well, you, you I'm have to hang said. up on you because when you say that uh, I make fun of the Constitution, that's a moronic statement. You have okay. never you heard me. Know. You have never, in the eight years I've been on this sh show, ever heard me make fun of the Constitution. Let me put it this way: fun maybe is not the correct word. I'll apologize on that. Okay. But I will say that you have said that it it has a racist connotation. That it was. Built, it was put together by racist people, and that those race people had slaves. And therefore, it, as Obama said in his speech, I want to fundamentally, which is no more fundamentally than the Constitution, change the United States. Okay. And, and, that, and you have agreed with those statements. No, I uh, I'm sorry if you know, that offends you. But I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm trying to talk you're, about you're the trying truth. To, you're just trying to talk, to be talking. And you're you're done. I'm going to Bill on line three. Yes, Bill. Hey, Rudy. Okay. First of all, great to have you back. Sorry to hear about your friend that passed. Thank you. Um, you know, as far as education goes, for, you know, African-American education, 
even back when I was in high school, I know we're going back many years, it, it uh, was pretty lacking, you know. I mean, it, yes. they had classes, but the, the shame of it today is that our news media and certain special interest groups and et cetera and so forth are, are just, are just uh, how do I want to put it? They're making their own version of what black history is or was or whatever, instead of really getting a book or going to college and getting a class and sit there and actually learning what's the truth and not all this, you know, made up stuff. And, and I think if people were better, better educated that way and stopped listening to the news, I think maybe, uh, you know, things would be better. But, I mean, that's what I get from some of this that I've listened to tonight on the show. Uh, people are just not educated, let's let's face it. And you can tell by the way they react, the way they talk. Yeah. It takes you only like two seconds to figure it out. But I just wanted to get my opinion and my thought out there and, I appreciate you listening. Thank you, and take care. Okay, Bill. Thank you for calling. We got Dominic on line two. Rudy, I knew that was exactly what was going to happen. <laughs> Everything that guy said was absolutely untrue. First off, the Spanish outlawed slavery. One of the reasons there were no slaves in Florida is because it was Spanish territory. The other reason being, see, and he didn't read the article. He's given you Fox News Rush Limbaugh nonsense. Yes. There were only 80-foot ships, and there were only 600,000 slaves. Over a million of them died on the way over. What is he talking about? And then this idea about the Constitution. First off, in the Constitution, black people are three-fifths human. He doesn't want to hear that part, does he? No. I mean— it's hysterical. You cannot deal with these people with facts because their mind is its worse than brainwashing. It's the cult of Trump and the nonsense of white supremacy, and it, it happens all over the world. The interesting thing, he didn't even get it right about sugar, and it was the French that started the sugar because of what they had in Haiti. And in fact, the only successful slave revolution in history happened in Haiti, and they killed the French and drove them out, and they've suffered for it ever since. Toussaint it's the utter, complete yeah. nonsense. And yeah. I don't know what to do about it, Rudy. You know, I, 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 I broke my neck to get three separate history degrees. My father-in-law, God rest him, is the most successful Latin American history, historian in the world. Name is Dr. Benjamin King. He was blackballed by McCarthy. Anytime you try to confront these people with anything but predatory capitalism, and the article says it clear. Oh, oh, oh no, oh, we live in a capitalist society. This is what you have to accept. And I'm not going to accept it. No, I mean, we should. You know, I'm 75 years old. I don't got no guns. I don't want to fight with nobody. But when I listen to a guy like that, I almost... I, I almost bit a hole in my hand. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's made me do that a few times. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, no, we, All don't, right. we, don't, we don't have but, to accept But I knew that was what was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, my brother. Okay, okay, Dominic. All right. Yeah, well, we, we knew. Hey, listen, Cliff <laughs> said uh, Steve was going to call. He, he knew he was, he was going to call. Because the the conservatives have been all over this 1619 project. They don't like it. And, uh, and, you know, like I said, I tell you, Dominic's a very well-read man. Like I tell you, he owns a bookstore. And he you is— You can't get any more well-read than that. <laughs> you know, yeah, he's, he is a very well-read man. And he's given, he's enlightened me on some issues for sure. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, so some of the slaves that were bought here were from vibrant and sophisticated civilizations. I, I can't think of the name of the tribe, but there was one tribe that had a very advanced uh, education program. I did a show on that about 
a year and a half ago, and I can't recall the name of the tribe, there is an argument that's being made by the conservatives that the first slaves that came here were indentured servants. Uh, I don't know why that seems to be an issue that is important for them to make that they were indentured servants. Other than the fact that, you know, in Africa, one thing that Steve said that's true. In Africa, Africa had slaves that were a byproduct of wars. And if a, a, a tribe won a particular war, they would, in many cases, take some of the people that had lost the war and they'd be indentured servants. Now, indentured servants, understand what that basically is as opposed to slavery. You're assigned to provide your services for a set period of time. And at the end of that time period, in general, you are set free. Now, the conservatives want to say that they were indentured servants, but here's the important point that you have to understand. While they want to say they were indentured servants, when they got here, they were sold. They were sold to the settlers. So if you're an indentured servant, uh, then why are they selling you? Why are they selling you if you're an indentured servant? If you came here as an indentured servant, why are they selling you? So that, that's an argument that uh, they have identified as one that people make, which doesn't seem to really make a whole lot of sense. Uh, now, slaves built the massive Fort Monroe between 1819 and 1834, and is sometimes referred to as Freedom's Fortress. General Benjamin Butler welcomed thousands of runaway slaves, which is how it got its name as Freedom's Fortress. So if you were able, if you were a runaway slave and you were able to make it to Fort Monroe, General Benjamin Butler would welcome those slaves that were runaways, thus the name Freedom's Fortress. But again now, I want you to see, the slaves built Fort Monroe. So they had the skill to build this fort. And we have Mike on line one. Yes, sir. Hi, evening. A very interesting and invigorating show, always stimulating. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was in the 60s and 70s lucky enough to see a lot of musical performers. And when we would see Jimi Hendrix, Taj Mahal, Chuck Berry, Donny Hathaway, I'd be sitting there thinking, Hathaway is the greatest singer in America. I wasn't sitting there thinking, what a great black performer, what a great African American. I was just seeing and hearing and enjoying and appreciating the talent. When did it change so that now race is always the first thing talked about? How can we ever get past it? when it's always now such a heavy, strong component of, of everything that relates. I, I don't understand. Does no one want to move on? Well, Mike, you know what? I, I will, let, me, let, me, let me surprise you. I detest that I have to have these conversations about race. I really do. And I know Doesn't it hurt you, though? Isn't it painful? Sometimes, it must be. Sometimes it's very painful. It but, must be. But, but by the same token, if, if I don't talk about it, there is no show on the Treasure Coast like mine. You're right. So I, at, at one time I told somebody that I was getting worn out, and they said, you can't quit because... 
there has to be, your voice has to be there. So I don't want to have to talk about it, but what we have to be able to do, Mike, is have a dialogue. Exactly. Okay, and, and, and you're a guy I could have a dialogue with. And I, I've had other guys that call me up that are conservative guys, and I have had lunch with them, and we have sat down and talked and enjoyed each other's company, and, and that's where it starts. Exactly. But you have to be able to talk candidly. Don't make up stuff. Don't you know? And and don't try to wipe away facts that are maybe not to your liking. The facts are what they are. But they're so so long ago. It can't possibly still affect. Did you like what Kanye West said about get the chip off the shoulder? Be yourself and move on. If you don't want to, that's your problem. I agreed with what he said. He got a lot of criticism, but I loved what he said, well, and I agreed. Well, part of what, and, and I encourage you to uh, read this information about the 1619 Project. Okay. Part of what they're talking about in this project is they're trying to get people to understand how the history of slavery has fast forwarded into today's uh, uh, climate is still with us. Some of the vestiges of what happened to African Americans during that time is still with us. Sure. And well, it, were terrible things, no doubt. Yeah. And the American Native Americans were declared an enemy for what twenty years and nearly driven to extinction. Well, Mike, so a, you know a lot of wrong things happen, but we can't change that now. No, we We're can't. Here now. No, we can't change it, but but we have to acknowledge it. L listen, like I Why? said, did you did you hear what I said in the beginning? Part of part of of growing up and and becoming a man is understanding who you are. Yes. And, and part of that is an understanding of your family. And understanding a little bit about who you were and where you came from. Now, for me, when I graduated from high school, and the gentleman that called earlier admitted that he was lacking knowledge about uh, slavery, I had no idea who I was. So if I didn't know who I was, how could you know who I was? And how does, do you, you can't imagine the effect that had on me because for a long time I was like, where do I fit? Where, where do I belong at here? Until I, under, until I got the education to understand that I'm an integral part of America. Yes, exactly. And that's, that's what most people want to it, it want people to understand. Mm -hmm. We love America. Good. We we love America. They, one of the ladies that wrote an essay for this project, she said when she was growing up, her father hung the American flag outside her house, and being that she was younger, it used to irritate her that her father hung that American flag until she figured out her father was proud of being an American. She got, she got it. That's why that flag was there. Even He was an African American that was proud to be part of this country, even with all its warts. And I, I say that, I've said that a million times. That's a good thing. Well, yeah. I, I, listen, I will tell anybody, I would lay down my life for this country if somebody came and attack, attacked us and I'm old now, but I take my bad feet and I do whatever I could to try to protect this country. That's but good with, to hear. I'm the same way. But if the country is not treating me right, I'm going to speak up. I'm going to complain. And I'm not complaining because, and this is what some people really don't get, I'm not complaining because I don't love her. I complain because I love her and I want her to be better. There's nothing wrong with that. That's it right there. That's that's 
sums up how I feel. So if, if I'm complaining about America, I'm complaining because I want her to be better. I want it to live up to all of the precepts and the principles that it says that it wants to be. Well, you're doing a great thing the way you're going about doing what you're doing. I can tell you that's how I feel, and I thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for being a listener. Okay, well, good night. Now. Okay, take care. Wow. And, and, and I would just say that uh, the point of this project is not to just revisit slavery. It is to emphasize how much slavery's legacy still threads through things in all aspects of American life today. That's, that's part of what uh, this project's all about. And in the project, it, it illuminates uh, how slavery has affected us even up to this very moment. And that's the aspect that I think is more important, that, that is really important for people to understand uh, that. And we have Brian. Yes, sir. How you doing, Rudy? Okay, Brian. Good. Um, I I wanted to just uh, you know bring out maybe a slightly different different um, view on on some things. One, I don't think there's enough credit given to the work that our founding fathers did and the work that um, Abraham Lincoln, the first Republican president, did. Um, and you know, to abolish slavery, um, you know, it was it was actually slavery was here before the founding fathers were here, and and some of the founding fathers tried to pass, and they actually did pass uh, anti-slavery measures, and the King of England actually prohibited them from enforcing those. And the actual. The, I don't know if you realize this, but the first anti-slavery law was actually passed before the founding of this country in Virginia, but it was struck down by, by King George. And um, our first Supreme Court Justice, John Jay, actually said that before the, uh, the American Revolution, that people just looked at slavery as if, as if it were commonplace and we're going to continue forever because they had seen it for so long you know it had been there before they were born and and they 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 didn't think that it would ever end but when people started to you know talk about and, and reason about freedom and about justice and equality and in fact the, the I, I heard one of your callers earlier you know talking about how slaves weren't you know uh, you know created as as you know, people that were given their rights by God, but that's the very reason those words were put into the Declaration, was to show that all men, including even the slaves, should be free. And the original draft of the Declaration even had a charge that that the that King George had forced slavery on America. Well, now just and, be be careful now because let's not forget. The Constitution made slaves three fifths of a person. They weren't, well, and, and that was an anti-slavery measure. How do you figure that? Because was the a, the South, the South wanted wanted the slaves to be counted as one, so that they would have more representatives than North. And by the way, the South didn't want slaves to vote. The, the North didn't want. This place to be counted as any because that would having them counted as one would give the southern states that supported slavery more delegates and more representatives in the house, which would make it more difficult to end slavery. That assumes it was an anti-slavery slavery, slavery um, clause. I've heard that, that argument, was misinterpreted but, by the U.S. Supreme Court. But that that I've heard that argument, but that presupposes that what's the truth? Well. 
I've heard that argument, but that presupposes that all the slaves that would have had an opportunity to vote would have voted on the side of the... They weren't going to vote. They weren't well, going to vote. <coughs> well, then why were they com com uh, com considered three-fifths of a human being? Be because, the, because the South wanted them to be considered as one human being so that they could have more, more uh, representatives. Now, the but North see, wanted that, them that, to be considered okay, as zero. You're, you're, you're missing my point because we're at the end of the hour. You that presupposes right. that presupposes that the slaves would have sided with the slave owners on any vote. I, I, the I, slaves I, weren't going to be able to vote, Rudy. I, I understand the, the point the South that you're wasn't making. advocating for the slaves being able to vote. Okay, I what, got what, I got to what, let what you was, I got to let you go now that, that we're at the end of the show. Call back next week. But folks, I'd like to thank you for listening to the African-American scene. It was a very interesting show. God bless, be safe, and I will see you next Wednesday right here for the African-American scene. Archives of the African-American scene with Rudy Howard are on YouTube. Go to WPSLTV.com. That'll take you straight to our YouTube presence, and there you'll find the African-American scene.